Five, four, three, two, fifteen. Hey, <laughs> wrong direction, lah. Twenty after the twenty-five, eh? Ten. Nine. Eight. Oh. Five. Four. four. Three. Import episode forty-five. It's 22nd April 2017, streaming directly from Singapore. It's We Build Live. This time on We Build Live, we'll be chatting about computer security with Eugene. Yay, Eugene Yay. Tio. Welcome to episode 45 of We Build Live. I'm your host, Sayani, and on the soundboard is Chin Mei. That's right. And our guest today is Eugene Tio. Hello. And he's right here with us in person. This is uh, for the first time ever. Yes, it's possible. Yes, uh, we, we we finally managed to get you know you know how we talked about you know when we rebooted uh, yeah. Rebuild Live we yep. had a new studio in quotes. Yes, and and one of the things we tried to do with the studio was to allow guests to come in live. Yep, because we've always had this question like oh how do I how do I join you like do I uh-huh. come over to your place? We were like no no you need to come over to the place you know we have the internet now you know you can do whole this whole thing over the internet but. We did have the ability to have a third person in, and then, you know, Eugene was like, I'll come over. It's like, okay, let's Because try Eugene out. happens to be our neighbor. Yes, he yeah. happens to live very close by. So, like, okay, yeah. come, on, come on down. So, it's fun because then we have been chatting a lot about stuff before. So, I think <laughs> we're already in the groove. Yeah. So. Great. So, Eugene he has been our, ge- uh, our friend, actually, for quite a few years. So, we got to know him as a security geek, a Linux geek. Uh, with a very special hmm, history. Okay, anyway, uh, but I will let uh, I will let Eugene Tio introduce himself. Eugene. Hi, um, my name is Eugene Tio, and I'm a director of security at a US-based company dealing with uh, HR-related security. And uh, this is the first time I'm uh, doing a podcast, and I'm very happy to be you know invited. Thank you for inviting me, and I hope to share you know what I know with you guys. And if you have any questions later, feel free to ask. Great. So, Eugene, you have been dabbling with security for about... Maybe close to 15 years. 15 years. Okay, lots to learn. I, I'm only just getting started. But uh, as an engineer, I'm realizing that security is so, so important. And uh, this was a great chance. So, but Chinme, uh, before we move on, yes. you have a welcome gift. Yes. So, there's a tradition in our you know, We Build Live that every yes. we welcome every guest with a so-called malformed query. Oh, why? So, it's a, it's a, it's a riddle. So, for you, Eugene, your riddle is this. Why do security conscious people live in dark and closed houses? Does Eugene do that? I don't do that. (laughs) Okay. Mm. You know why? Because bugs come in through open windows. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. No, I don't don't use windows, so I... (laughs) Yeah, so that's why you you don't have any windows, right? (laughs) There's no bugs. (laughs) Okay, so what operating system do you use? Um, I used to use um, Linux all the time. Yeah. I started Fedora. using Mac. Um, Fedora, mm-hmm. um, Debian. Okay. Uh, I like Debian. Okay. And, uh, I, remember I, used, one of, um, I remember one of the talks that Eugene gave once about how he was, uh, he was scolded by Linus Torvalds. Oh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's a privilege. <laughs> because you work so close so, to them. I, so, I mean, I, I'm guessing you've have, you have spent a lot of time with Linux. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I mean, I mean uh, Linux is my first love. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, ever since when I was in poly, you know, I refused to use Windows. Not because I, I mean, maybe, yeah, I, I, I hate Windows. Okay. <laughs> I don't like to use Windows uh, mm-hmm. even today. But not because of uh, the operating system, but because of the philosophy mm-hmm. and because the things that they do. But um, at that time, I I don't feel like you know why I should spend money buying proprietary software. Mm-hmm. So it's, I you know I started to use Linux and I play with it, and I also tried different flavors of Unix, mm-hmm. and uh, it just you know became a, a nice hobby to have, and, and it keeps me challenged. That that's a great way, especially for students, you know, because students are always like cash strapped, and that's a great way to start off with Linux. Yeah. Great, so. Live audience, if you're listening to us, there are quite a few listening to us from the stats. So please uh, listen to us while having your breakfast or your tea and drop yeah, very your late, like question. 11 o'clock already. What breakfast and tea? <laughs> <laughs> we just had coffee with Eugene. Yes, we did. <laughs> Bring your drinks, your favorite drinks along and post your security questions for Eugene on Gitter chat. So that's gitter.im slash webuildsg slash live. So post your questions and we will pick it up 
and during the audience polling question, Eugene will answer them. Great. So um, let's start off with the computer security topic of the day. So why is security important today? Well, you know, computer security is always important. You know, just a matter of uh, whether people knowing that it's important. Mm. I guess, uh, you know, um, there's many ways of looking at security, computer security. You know, some people look at it like insurance. You know, people <laughs> think that uh, insurance is only important when something, you know, terrible yeah. happens. And, you know, if nothing happens, why are you paying why bother? You know, yeah. premiums, right? Mm -hmm. And likewise, you know, when people look at security, they look at it the, the same way. You know, if nothing happens, why should we, you know, invest in, you know, technologies to protect ourselves? Um, I, I think that, you know, like back in 2013, when there was uh, an anonymous operations attack yeah. you know, on some of oh, the yeah. prominent Singapore mm -hmm. websites, I was involved in the uh, providing expert opinions mm -hmm. to oh, nice. uh, AGC and uh, some members of the Singapore Police Force and, and we went through the evidence and all that. But I mean, the point, main point is that, you know, it really made people wake up that, you know, computer security is important, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that we shouldn't ignore. And, and we started to see that, that you know, government has been, uh, you know, spending money, building the right, uh, you know, agencies, you know, hiring people, emphasizing that yeah. security is important. And people started to, you no, know, I started to get applicants who tell me that, oh, I'm very interested in security. Uh, I want to switch my careers. That's a nice you know, change. They hire me, you know. Yeah. 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 So, you know, but security has always been important. I've been, you know, uh, when I started learning Linux, you know, um, security wasn't my focus, but at some point, you know, a couple of years later, I felt that, you know, maybe I should learn another, you know, skill yeah. and I chose computer security, you know, mm -hmm. but there's a story behind it I can share with you if you want, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's something important because if you don't protect your infrastructure, if you don't mm -hmm. protect your software, you know, mm -hmm. bad things can happen to you mm -hmm. yeah. and you do not want that to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and especially these yeah. days, I'm guessing we, we do so many things on our computers. Yeah. I mean, networked computer you know, on the internet, everything, yeah. banking, yeah. Yep. insurance. You know, so many, you know, things that are very uh, sensitive. And slowly, it's being connected to the physical infrastructure. Yes. Yeah, along with finance, medical systems. You know, like yeah. uh, utilities across cities. So we will have security vulnerabilities, or uh, this kind of mindset is needed even more. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so let's say somebody comes to you to look at a brand new system, you know, and to secure it. How would you get started? I really have, I always get kind of confused of how to get started. What's the approach you would take? Well, you know, like when people work on a new system, security is always an afterthought. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. I mean, ideally, when you start working on a system, you should, you know, get uh, security involved right at the very beginning. Right from you know, day one. The mm -hmm. design stage. You know, try to understand, go through a checklist, you know, have you, if you're going to have a login page, do you have SSL, you know, the kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, usually what I would recommend is to do a threat, uh, threat modeling, mm -hmm. okay. you know, understanding, uh, you know, your system uh, from a point of view of, of an attacker, you know, what are the point of entry, uh, where are your crown jewels, where, where are your high value assets, mm -hmm. you know, um, how can an attacker, you know, up, um, uh, Gain access, you know, to your system from a uh, from a different means. You know, try to understand, you know, uh, your system from a different perspective, and try to see how you know you as a defender protect yourself. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. at the design stage. Okay. You know, don't wait until you ship the product to your customers or to your users. Start complaining to, you know, and, and yeah. people start complaining mm -hmm. and you start to deal with all the you know, security issues that people may find, and that will be too late. You know, you'll be like patching and fixing the problem and not really addressing the root cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but uh, people should realize that, you know, no matter you know, whether you're a small company or whether you're working on an open source project, you know, security has to be the number one or maybe number two you know, priority in your development and you know, start approaching problems you know, from that perspective. Yeah. One of the things I always struggle with is that, you know, as a developer, let's, I mean, a lot of the audience are, are not security professionals. They're mostly developers yeah. Or, yeah. or hackers, engineers, makers, yeah. engineers. Like, I think the perspective that you need or the mindset you need to consider, like what you're talking about, threat models or like, what you said, like look at it from an attacker's perspective, see how you can get it. I think it's so super hard for an engineer, an engineer to yeah. think from yeah. that perspective, right? Have you have you? We only think that? of features, you know, engineers' features or bugs or yeah. Like, I mean, I I mean, in my previous roles, I I I do work with you know many different 
developers mm. and uh, engineers. Like when I was at Red Hat, I I get to work with people with long hairs and long beards. And, <laughs> and, you know, I, I I get to work with people like Linus uh, Linus or Andrew Morton, mm-hmm. you know, from the Linux kernel community. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, the perspective from a developer is so different from a security guy. Yep. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a smartphone, mm-hmm. right? And you see a notification popping up mm-hmm. on your phone. Mm-hmm. A software engineer will probably a developer, right? Will probably say, you know, uh, how can I uh, show the notification uh, on your phone at uh, a certain uh, after receiving a certain event? And then what happened when you close the uh, notification? Yeah. Should I just close it? Should mm-hmm. I perform another action and all yeah. of that? And what should I display on the notification? Exactly. A QA engineer will on uh, will say you know things like um, uh, how do I make sure that you know what the developer did right is indeed what they have written yep. right. You no, know, make sure that the notification appears at the right time, close, you know, instead of just ignoring your, you know, input and all sure. that. But from a security point of view, right, uh, a security guy or lady, right, will, will think something like, oh, how can I, uh, run a long test in the uh, notification so that I can crash the phone? <laughs> uh, how can I, uh, make sure that, you know, um, the notification don't, uh, appear when, you know, when you, when you want it to appear? And how can I make use of this notification so that I can, like, enter, you know, uh, break into the software and gain access, you know? So, it's, it's, it's a very different mindset, uh, different, you know, it is, it is. Perspective. Like, what you said, I think, is, is very interesting. Like, normally, when you, let's say you're, you're making a, like, a notification widget, right? As a, as an engineer, you would test, oh, uh, if I type in words, okay, it works. If I type in letters, it works. If I type in, uh, you know, uh, a long sentence, it works. Okay, good. Can ready. Yeah. Nobody's going to try to type like a thousand characters and see where it crashes. No, mm-hmm. I, will, I will even look at Unicode. Yeah. Like, exactly. Things that people won't know, try. This was this, the, the recent news, yeah, the, right? The, the, the Chrome, Unicode, the browser, uh, right? Fishing. URLs. Yeah. Yeah. So now we can go to apple.com, but it's not actually apple.com. Yep. Like, this is definitely somebody who thought of, of it as saying, oh, if I put punny code inside the uh, uh, URL bar, it, it would look nice and people would be happy with it. And then somebody found a way to hack around it. Yeah. It's so hard for engineers to, to think that way. Yeah. So, yeah. How, how, what would you suggest? I mean, do you suggest that you hire professionals? Do you suggest engineers maybe take courses? Like, how do you, how would an engineer work make, better? Make, make that mindset or <laughs> yeah. maybe. Or at least be aware of it. At least be aware of it, yeah. I I think everyone starts from somewhere, right? Even a security guy, you know, has to learn some uh, new things and start from the very basics and, you know, be as good as, you know, they are today. Um, uh, Developers can do the same. Mm -hmm. You know, they are, I mean, as compared to the 90s or even the early 2000s, we have so much books, so many security books now that you you can just go to Amazon.com to pick up a few and, you know, spend some time learning. Mm-hmm. And you'll be as good as a uh, security guy. But I, I think, you know, learning is just one thing, right? You really need to change the mindset. You know, really need to think about the corner cases. You think, need to think about, you know, uh, if you, if you do this, you know, I mean, like, you don't, when, you, when a software developer will look at a door yeah. as a point of entry, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But a, a security guy will look at a window as a point of entry. Yeah. You know, so you've got to change the sure. mindset, yeah. to change the way you think, you know, mm-hmm. and try to read as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Look at what other people are doing, right. you know, not to say that you want to be a bad, uh, bad person, but, you know, try to learn what bad people are doing and try to see, you know, how you can defend it from the defender's point of view. You can only defend if you know the yes. attacker mindset. Yes, precisely, right? Yeah. 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 Great. So, Eugene, why don't we talk about some tools and resources that you use daily or you like? Let's mm. get into the nitty-gritty details. Yeah, of sure. Security. I mean, it really depends on uh, what you mean by security. Mm-hmm. Uh, security is uh, a, a oh, broad it's fast. Thing, right? yeah. It's like, uh, like uh, beer. But you know, do you like to brew a beer? Uh, do, do, do you like yeah. to brew beer? Or do you like to buy beer? Do you like to drink beer? Yeah. Or do you just like to spend money so that people can drink beer? Yeah. No, it's just like security, right? Mm-hmm. But so, uh, I mean, for us, or at least for my team, we do a lot of monitoring. We okay. do a lot of uh, mm-hmm. detection and respond. And we also work on incident response. So uh, some of the tools that we used uh, includes like Elasticsearch, Kibana. Mm-hmm. You know, we mm-hmm. do a lot of data analysis. Um, you know, you try to learn R and Python, oh. uh, and you know, right now we are trying to learn machine learning to see how we can apply, wow. you, know, uh, you know, that in the screening monitoring because you know, sure, yeah, there's lots of sense. different activities going on, right. you know, in a uh, in a, a company infrastructure. Yeah. We want to see how we can reduce the number of noise yeah. so that you, can, you focus on the more you know important things, and you know, yeah. there's a lot of things that we can do. Uh, I remember we talked about this with Rahul when we talked about infrastructure. Yep. Uh, and our he talked previous about, episode guest. Yeah, and he talked about how he had, you know, 
gigabytes of logs coming in from mm-hmm. all the different bits of infrastructure in his in mm-hmm. his uh, in his uh, office and you know we were asking him how can he manage that how does mm-hmm. he manage it i think mm-hmm. i i didn't realize but stuff like machine learning could be very interesting in this stuff but to pop out like interesting events saying that oh you know this kind of a pattern is is probably a yes. uh, something attacker, wrong is happening yeah. you know yeah. yes yeah. there's a lot of uh, opportunities to apply you know, machine learning in security you know mm. things like it, clustering you know understanding yeah. how you can separate different kind of logs Nice. You know, or, or how can we uh, look through uh, the different alerts that we have and maybe use random forest to you know, reduce the uh, false positive and give us probability that oh this wow. could be an incident this could uh, this maybe this is not uh, valid you know the kind of thing so that mm-hmm. we can uh, spend more time on you know the things that we want to look at and less time on on, on this kind of noise mm-hmm. fascinating is is this already used in the industry is this something that's co- commonplace or are you guys like trying to come up with new ideas and new techniques of doing things well there are many security startups that you know emphasized mm-hmm. on using machine learning to solve big problem uh, my, my for my company you know we are all security people we are not machine you know, uh, sure. learning engineers and mm-hmm. we are trying to see you know how we can customize our our you know monitoring platform to do all this Right. Uh, I, I think right now we are still in an emerging stage okay. where people are trying to figure out what, what we can do with machine learning as compared to other industry where it's more mature. Mm-hmm. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, Amazon.com. Right. Yep. Uh, if you buy a book or if you browse a book, they will give you recommendations. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And you, uh, you will find that, you know, some of the books they recommend is something that you may like. Mm-hmm. But for security, that's a very different problem, right? Oh, really? If, if, uh, if a machine learning algorithm gives you a list of things that you should focus on and then ignore the rest because, uh, based on the algorithm, the probability of that or something happening is low. Yeah. And if it turns out to be, False. You no, know, it turns out to be a real incident. Mm. Then we are we are in big trouble. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and and that's something that you know we we need we, we still need people to uh, you yeah. know go through them just to make sure, sure. You know, because the stakes are a lot higher. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And the, the problems that we do are a lot more uh, yeah. serious right. as compared right. to just book recommendations. So yeah. you know, also, there's a lot of things that we have to do. Have to also, I think more. once people realize that you are using certain system, they will try to game that. And they will try to go around it and see, oh, how can I hide my tracks? Yeah. Even if you're using this thing. So there's always going to be this cat and mouse thing that your machine learning has to keep on top of. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if you look at the academic research, right, there's this thing called the uh, adversarial uh, machine learning where, mm. you know, where you have machine algorithms doing uh, you know, automate certain things. And then, but the input, right, the data, the logs and all that is still controllable by the attacker. And mm-hmm. how can an attacker influence your machine learning algorithms to give an, uh, a result that that the attack wow, attack. wow, this is wow. So, it's very interesting space. This I never very, thought of that this in is very machine meta, learning. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you, you know that they're using this machine learning and we want to, you know, tweak it to yeah. give you the wrong wow this is yeah oh, so it's wow. very interesting never thought of much, security uh, and machine learning, learning yeah. in this this aspect yeah it, yeah exactly yeah. actually this is what one of the things i was uh wanted to ask eugene before when you're talking about it because he was saying he's getting really into machine learning mm-hmm. now i was curious what it is and now i understand this is this is really fascinating stuff so you want to use machine learning to look for patterns yeah uh, look for patterns mm-hmm. uh you know, give me a high uh, probability of things uh events or you know, alerts that are being triggered and so that you know uh, rather than going through every Thing, mm-hmm. which could, mm-hmm. it could mean a lot of time being spent on right. tickets. Uh, you know, how can we reduce that so that we only look at just a subset of those alerts? Yeah. Okay. And okay. You know, because, uh, you know, with bigger and bigger systems, we are like just flooded by alerts yes. and notification and that's where machine learning can come in place. Yes. And there's a lot of things that mm-hmm. we can automate. Yeah. Right. That's, that's yeah. really cool. That's so, um, quick question. We were talking about mm-hmm. tools and resources. Like, let's say if I want, you know, I'm, I'm doing this kind of stuff. I want to get started with, you know, maybe not machine learning, maybe basic data, data science kind of stuff. Are there any packages, libraries, tools that you would recommend or? Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess, uh, everyone who starts learning security will have played with, uh, meta exploit. Yeah. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, most of the candidates I spoke to, they, they they learn pen testing penetration yeah. testing mm-hmm. I, I think you know the movies the TV sure. has, uh, <laughs> gave people the impression that you know security is all about penetration testing hacking right. you know trying to uh, run tools uh, towards a target the software mm-hmm. in order to find out whether they have a security issue mm-hmm. and I will say that you know uh, meta exploit or a tool similar to that will mm-hmm. be a good you no know, way to get started. At least you've been exposed to you know some of the fun stuff, yeah. and it keeps you you know gets you motivated and learn some learn more stuff. You know, mm-hmm. and I also uh, want to encourage people you know that if you're interested in security, don't just focus on one area. Mm-hmm. You know, try to 
explore as many areas as possible before you specialize. Sure. What, what that, do you that, mean by areas? Like, uh, let's say you know, um, like you could focus on pen testing. Uh-huh. You could focus okay. on vulnerability analysis. You could mm. focus on mobile reverse engineering. So these are the areas of security that I okay. <laughs> yeah, or you could, uh, no, there's uh, security operations where we look at network uh, network logs and all that. So there are many things that we can do with security, mm-hmm. but you know, try to have exposure in many areas as possible, mm. before, especially as a beginner. Yeah, yep. as a beginner. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. What about uh, books or movies? Books, movies, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> movies are uh, like not not the right perception. Uh, or movies. Um, no. Okay. Uh, this one, this one movie. Oh uh, no, this one uh, TV drama was that uh, 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 Elliot in the. Uh, what is this? Was yeah. the, the, it's on Amazon. I forgot. What yeah, it was. It was yeah. super famous. Apparently, that was one of the most uh, accurate portrayals ever of like security. I stuff watched like, like I watched a few episodes. I I think it's uh. Okay, so it's a TV show. Yeah, it's a TV show. Yeah. Elliot just TV show. Okay. I just couldn't remember. What's okay, the name sure, of the show, sure. But, uh, we, we will we'll get it out. Yeah. Elliot Kid. No, 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 no. So the House guy, of yeah. Elliot. Oh, oh, Mr. Robot. Mr. Yes. Robot. Mr. Robot. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Okay, Mr. Forget. Robot. Yeah. So, okay. you know, we are googling at the same time. Yeah. And, okay, Mr. Robot. Coincidentally, right? I have uh-huh. two members in my team mm-hmm. whose name are. Elliot. Oh. <laughs> so Elliot is like a new man. What an apt name for a security <laughs> team. <laughs> yeah. You know, cool. so you can see that, you know, shows like these can have an impact on people, you know, that mm-hmm. uh, they, mm-hmm. they like it to the point where they would use their names. <laughs> yeah. You know, books, there are so many books around, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, w- I would suggest that, you know, um, try to uh, look at a website like Amazon, look at the reviews, look at the number of stars, you know, try to get a book that, that, that is recent. Don't try to get a book that is like five years old, two years old. Oh, really? You know? Like, yeah. aren't there some fundamentals um, in security that just lives on? Like well, physics or maths, you know, there are certain fundamentals. <laughs> no, so, okay. <laughs> uh, so, you know, like people, people will usually complain that, uh, uh-huh. you know, in IT, yeah. things move so quickly. Yeah, yeah security. In, in security too. world, things move even faster, yeah. right? Uh, uh, because you have to get uh, like a one up the attacker, right? Yeah. Um, so, you can right. say, you know, that could be one of the reasons. But yeah. I think that, you know, like when you learn security, you don't just want to learn a theory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to do some hands-on. Mm-hmm. And books get oscillated very quickly. Oh, mm-hmm. true. Especially yeah. technology books. Yes. Yeah. You know, sometimes when a software is already patched, you know, when there is a security issue, when they publish a book, they talk about the issue, they write a, a POC, a proof of concept, you know, mm-hmm. to show you, you know, why this is a problem. Mm-hmm. But by the time you read the book, the issue has been resolved mm-hmm. and you cannot, you know, yeah. you cannot try, you know, mm-hmm. well, you know, maybe you have to go through lots of steps to get that issue, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, to be, you know, to be available for you to try out, you know, but the, the, the thing is that, you know, if you get the book that, that is more recent, mm-hmm. you know, the opportunity to learn is a lot greater. Mm. Okay, great, great. So, live audience, if you're listening in, and uh, yep, there are quite a few of you in the chat as well, uh, do post your questions in the chat, yeah, which is already, at, uh, uh, yeah, we already have a couple of a questions. A bunch of uh, stuff happening in the chat. Yeah, so join in the chat, uh, get your tea or coffee, and uh, just uh, write your opinions and your expressions about security on gitter.im slash webuildsg slash live. Great, so... Uh, I think uh, we spoke a little bit about like what an engineer or developer should take note of when building systems. Yeah, well, you can you can if you if you have any specific uh, angles so that you can you can you can share maybe Eugene like uh, what, there, are there some you know what should a, a new engineer or developer should take note of when when uh, building new systems? Oh, sorry, specific. I, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. To, uh, <laughs> you no were worries. distracted by the chat. Yeah, I was distracted by the, the chat. The chat is very <laughs> exciting today. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what, what was like, what, what are some things that a, a engineer or developer should take note of? I mean, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but would you have specific uh, things for them to learn or look at, or you know, checklists to follow or? Uh, guidelines to look at uh, if they want to. Yeah, sure. So. Uh, you know, like if you're if you're doing web development, that's mm-hmm. OWASP uh, top ten. Ah, you know, OWASP. Uh, yep. And if you have a good understanding, you know what these top ten things are mm-hmm. to take note of your you know, mm-hmm. web application. Mm-hmm. I, I think you are a lot better than many people out there. You right. Know? Yeah. And if you are more um, interested in more of a traditional you know, enterprise kind of software, um, you should you could look at you know uh, products like Covarity or similar, you know, kind of products where you 
could do static analysis okay. uh, to understand you know, what are some of the problems that are in the, the code and try to resolve them, or you could you know uh, look at developing fuzzers to try right. to you know uh, find problems you know dynamically. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of things they can do. One of the things I learned as an engineer is that, uh, especially when working on IoT things, is that I must have a means to patch the software. Like, especially for IoT, you know, your physical, like, little lamps or bulbs, they're, like, just deployed. Physically, like, in a very, Actually, very... Routers are a big issue. Oh, yeah, routers too. Well. Yeah. I mean, in fact, TP-Link, I think, recently uh, is forcing all the users to change the default password or yeah. something like that. So, the, these are some kind of uh, features that... Uh, engineers should take note like you know by default the user should not be able to do something that is not secure or by default you know immediately when the patches all the vulnerability is found the patches uh, kind of developed you should be able to remotely patch all your devices or it's, software it's, it's easily said that then though because, yeah absolutely, uh, you know, absolutely. I, was, I was reading another article recently about uh, i think it was some super cheap android phones mm -hmm. where they have this uh, firmware automatic firmware update uh, mechanism except that's not signed no oh. <laughs> so <laughs> and 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 and, mm. and they just go to a random website, uh, not over SSL, just plain, you know, like normal HTTP, and then download this firmware bundle, and then they flash it in, into themselves. Very fishy. Yeah. <laughs> Very this is, fishy. Uh, perfect. You know, this is the thing, right? It's it's a lot of times you're like, oh, you know, I, I'm going to implement a firmware update, uh, you know, feature, and you do it, and then you never think that, hey, you know, maybe somebody can just redirect my yeah, do HTTP manual traffic. Manual, you know, yeah. Do manual yeah, manual manual, manual, yeah. And there's no way to verify that, you know, the update is really from you. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot of problems with IoT, and not, not to just, uh, not to de make everybody depressed, but you know, there's a lot of things <laughs> that we need to do. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, IoT, you know, um, there's lots of different vendors and yep, not yep. all vendors are committed to provide the updates and patches yeah. for yeah. a long time. So also, I feel that because traditionally IoT devices as of today are being made by vendors who did appliances, mm -hmm. they are not really aware of networking. They're not aware of security. They probably build mechanical systems or microcontrollers that were just uh, like mm -hmm. kind of isolated into that device. So they have no awareness of security at all. Yeah, so, you know, there's so much things that we can do, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so much things that we can learn. Uh, and a lot of companies are, are you know, understanding, you know, this is a problem. And, and if we, if they were to address security issues one by one, device by device, yeah. that may not be the oh, way, yeah. you know. So, yeah, you know, yeah. like people have to come up with new innovative ways to solve this problem. Maybe mm -hmm. could we look at a network layer? Mm -hmm. you know, can we try to put all these devices in a network and try to protect users from that way, you know, do filtering and all mm -hmm. that? Or should they, uh, you know, have a, a Call for call architecture so that you know mm -hmm. if anyone's anybody wants to work on um, IoT device, they use you know the APIs and all right. that. But there's also a lot of constraints that people you know face when they use IoT, yeah. mm -hmm. like you know they cannot transmit a lot of data. Yeah. At, at one point oh yeah, low bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. Kind of low, low powerful power, yeah. devices low power. because yeah. Yeah. you want cheap devices, so you they can't be very powerful processors. So yeah. Yeah. and you want them to last on a battery for like 10, 20 yeah. years. You yeah. know those. And then, you know, typical advice would be like, don't reinvent the wheel, don't implement the <laughs> protocol yourself, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, use an open source project that is like mature and people have done it before, but yeah. sometimes may not apply. Yeah. Uh, especially in uh, IoT, the protocols are not mature. People are still trying to figure out how yes. to have that efficient energy and low bandwidth protocol and yet secure. So, yes. yeah, I agree yes. with you. So, you know, you're going to have job security for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Including you, Eugene. <laughs> if you work, so this is this is your, your tip to the audience. If you want to make sure that you have a job, you know, work in IoT and security. <laughs> no, I mean, like, uh, if you think about it, right, the whole software industry is broken. Yeah. You know, like, which other industry do you know that can uh, accept, you know, bugs and broken software things that don't work in production, yeah. mm. you know, that you can sell? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Unfortunately, software industry is kind of... Uh, uh, widespread in many industries. Yeah. Transportation, airplanes run software, yeah. medical device, medical devices run software. It's it's like everywhere. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting because uh, you know what, what you said is very true. Like if you go to a supermarket, if you buy milk that's spoiled, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can always go back and say I, I'm I'm you know I get full refund for this. But you know if, if software, you get a no. bug in your Windows code, you can't go back to Microsoft and say I re I want to return this. You know, Windows, you know, <laughs> license key to you. I don't like this anymore. I don't want it. Like, it's like that, that whole thing is not, not there anymore. 
Yeah. Also, like uh, for more uh, critical stuff, like you know, medical equipment and stuff, you can sue people if oh, they yeah. if they sell you stuff that's not transportation as well. Yeah, yeah. and, and if yeah. they sell you stuff that's not yeah. um, up to schmuck, right, or yeah. has issues, yeah. uh, none of that stuff in the fair world as well. Right? They just <laughs> So I'm to think about. All right, Eugene, one last question on this topic before we move forward. What are you excited about security? We had a lot of like scary stories and stuff. Are you excited about something? I think it's because of the scary stuff that it makes me, you know, continue to be very interested in this oh, field. Interesting. And uh, I, I think, you know, for my career, I have met uh, a lot of, um, I mean, I, I, even though, you know, I have mostly focused on security, but, you know, I, I, I went from a very research person to a more like a um, very specialized person focusing on Linux kernel. And then I, I went on to lead teams and build teams and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think there's so much things to do, you know. Um, we, I, I, I think what really keeps me interested is that, you know, computers are not going away. Yep. Internet is not going away. Yep. And my kids are going to use internet, mm-hmm. one, you know, when they grow up. And they're going to use software. And we need to make sure that, you know, we continue to educate people, educate, you know, developers, make sure that we do the right things to protect, you know, the, the privilege that we have today. You know, we, if you talk about me when I was younger, I don't get to use a computer until I was 15. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. to use a computer to be able to hook up onto the internet with a modem and hear the dial tone, it was like, wow. <laughs> Magic. Wow, wow. You know, it's really, you know, that feeling, I, yeah, I, yeah. That, that feeling, you know, you can never forget that feeling. And, and we need to really do our part, you know, to to make sure that uh, we do our, uh, make sure that the internet is safe and and people you know are be able to do and improve their lives a lot, you know, with a uh, you know, safe environment that they can perform transactions, to do their banking transactions and all that. I think it's very important, and you know, we should keep it that way to give that privilege to the you know people in the future. Right. Are there some algorithms or technology that you're looking forward to learning? Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's uh, so much things to learn. So I, <laughs> I, 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 I was, I'm trying to work on, I'm trying to build a, an open source uh, curriculum of modules to, to, to learn. You know, they are, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty interested in data science these days. You know, I've been reading mm-hmm. books like uh, R for Data Science and uh, learning R mm-hmm. and uh, trying to take a module on linear algebra <laughs> and trying to relearn my calculus because um, uh, some bad experience in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to some teachers. I, I really hate the topic, but uh, I, know I need to relearn. And uh, Are you taking some online course? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, well, what, what online course are you well, doing? I, I, like for the math modules, I'm taking uh, th- those from uh, MIT. Right. Uh, right, and, right. And then uh, some machine learning uh, from Stanford. You know, okay. Everyone knows okay. about it. Uh, exactly. These are all open yeah. And available to anyone, yes. so don't stop learning, even if you have you have as much experience as Eugene. Yes, I mean precisely. You know, if you look at yeah. uh, you know, maybe ten years ago, people have to pay to learn. You mm-hmm. know, now people are giving you stuff to learn. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great, great. All right, so that's it for the for the main segment of uh, this episode, which is uh, computer security. But uh, Chinme, we are going on to the next segment, which yes. is IO polling. That's right. So the second segment uh, in our show is called IO polling. And uh, this is where, you know, Eugene's already like, you know, flexi- flexing himself, <laughs> getting ready to fight it all now. It's not about fighting, it's about audience questions. And uh, yes. the audience has already been asking some questions. So uh, I'm, I will start with them. So the first question, I think this is a very interesting one, which is how do you balance business cost with security? And this is something that, you know, now you're saying you're leading teams and stuff. I think it's something you probably face all the time is like, Justifying that you know I'm going to have to spend all this money to make something secure and uh, and, and it might not be very obvious. So how do you how do you balance that? Yeah, I mean from a technical guy, you want to solve everything, but you know when you look at businesses, they have very different priorities. Mm-hmm. So you know uh, security is not uh, a, a department that should work in silo. Mm-hmm. It should really work with different departments like mm-hmm. uh, sales and business mm-hmm. you know, development because ultimately you want to understand right in the company. Okay, which product or services generates the most revenue, yep. right? And you know, the top priority will be that, you know, which software or services, okay, um, collects lots of PII, you know, personally identifiable data mm-hmm. and all that, you know, that should be the main uh, um, primary focus. So you got to uh, try a balance. I always use a formula, you know, security equal one over convenience, right? right you have, yeah. Whenever you do something, you know, if you want security, you have to sacrifice you know, convenience. convenience. Yeah. If you want convenience, you have to sacrifice oh, some yeah. security. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, but of course, there are other variables, you know, it's not as straightforward as that formula. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to do a risk assessment, you got to understand the business, look at the financial reports, annual reports, 
and you know, and do you know, make sure you protect the right things. You cannot have all your resources because usually there are limited resources yeah. on everything, right? Yeah. You got to mm -hmm. uh, spend. Uh, what you have right now to focus on what's the most important thing right. and then once you're doing once you're done uh, do it well and you start to focus on other things that are less part, uh, not less uh, you know, important mm -hmm. uh, that, that way you know you'll be mm -hmm. uh, able to you know make sure that you have a team yeah. that uh, could solve problems yeah. you are not solving all the problems you solve the most important problems uh, yeah. they're focused and you know you get things done Right. The the main no, the the worst thing that will happen is that uh you know you have a small team focusing on all the problems and you end up nothing done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a jack of all the trades kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Would you have some um, recommendations, suggestions for management people? Um, <laughs> management people like uh, because engineers have to work with them. Like, Security so people you, have to work. Do with you have any tips for managers? Yeah, exactly for managers. I mean, like we had tips for engineers, but how about managers? I, I think the best. Product I mean, my, 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 my opinion, right? Yep, yep. Uh, my personal opinion, may, um, hopefully I don't offend anybody. <laughs> but uh, well, my opinion is that uh, the best manager are actually people who have done this before. Right? Like they have been ex-security or engineers. Yes, I mean, uh, I've seen managers who uh, you know, mess everything up because they have no idea right, what their guys are doing. Mm. Mm. And they have no idea how difficult it is or how, mm. you know, what, what the tele uh, technical challenges uh, they, mm. they are facing. Yep. Right? A technical person who is a manager understands what they're going through yep. Yep. and yep. you know they do the best to make sure that they support them yep. and remove any impediments they may oh, face oh yeah absolutely you know? remove obstacles yeah. Yeah. and I, I think that the, the, the usual tips you know, it's like people will tell me Eugene you know what you're telling me are all common sense but you know, <laughs> really they're all common sense right you yeah. know um Make sure that you provide you know, what they need. You invest in them. Mm -hmm. You you, know, you can do your part by making your work environment you know uh, yeah. fun. Yeah. You know we have mon monthly uh, lunch and learn. Mm -hmm. We have a sharing session. Yeah. <clears throat> I share links. Yeah. We have uh, you know machines that we can have fun with. We mm -hmm. set up you know test labs and all that. And you know um, we want to work on pet projects. You mm -hmm. know yeah. if we can spend uh, an hour. Which I don't think is too much to ask, mm -hmm. right? Working on something interesting or learn something new, why not, right? Mm -hmm. And the more important thing is to not have a top-down approach, but mm -hmm. to share, have yeah. an open collaboration. Yeah. You know, you you if you hire people, you want to empower them, not to control them, and mm -hmm. I think that's very important, right? Mm -hmm. And the only way to find out is you going through, you know, what they went through, right. so that you know what they want, and mm -hmm. that that way, you know, you have a happy team. Yeah. yeah, and I think uh, what Harish Pillay in the chat also pointed out, leaders must be humble yeah. and get a clue. So even if you... Totally. <laughs> Thank you, Harish, for Ooh. that comment. Great. Right. Uh, any other question. question? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think this is something to do with the recent uh, news, but uh, Justin asks... Uh, no, sorry, before that, yeah, uh, Michael more, asks, yeah. what do you see uh, as uh, threat actors potentially facing Singapore in the next five years? This will be interesting. Uh, threat actors mm -hmm. facing Singapore? In, yeah. the, next in the next five, five years. years. So Very what, specific what are the question. specific threat actors you are, you, you are worried about, I guess? What kind that may be? I mean, if you look at Singapore, um, yes. all the threats that we're seeing are all quite... Uh, not not very um, cool, uh, you know. Yeah. They are not very like um, super difficult to you know, launch. Um, but uh, I but that's a lot of other security activities that were not publicly shared, right? Um, I I think the question I will uh, I will I mean I will rephrase the question. Maybe it's wrong, but you know, what is more important is to have uh, a government that is more open to sharing, mm -hmm. and it has to work two ways. Mm -hmm. You know, not just the private organization sharing information to the governments, but the governments have to come forward to share these learning mm. experiences to everybody mm. so that you know everyone knows what's going on. Of course, of course, of course, people will say that, oh, uh, you know, we yeah. have, you need to have intelligence and, you know, if you share too much, people will, so will, will <laughs> other, other foreign, you know, governments will know or other adversaries will know that, you know, we, we share too much, right? This but, is like the open source argument, right? Like the yeah. open algorithms are... <laughs> but I think there's, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I think there's yeah. a way to strike a balance yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. We, uh, and that, you know, the, you know, the private public partnership has to start somewhere, mm. you know, and I really want to see that happen, you know, like if there's an attack happening, we don't need to know who did it. Mm. We probably want to know how it was done yeah. so that everyone knows how to protect themselves yeah. or mm -hmm. organization could learn from yeah. some of the lessons that they, they, they have been through yeah. to protect ourselves. And I think that's very important and something needs to be done. Nice. Good. That, that, that was a very good answer. Okay. So, Next question from Jesslyn. We, we have actually two more questions, uh, at least. 
Uh, this is something to do with the recent news about the Bose wireless headsets. Uh, could you could you give a brief background of what happened? Seems there? like you you have a Bose. Oh no, I don't have uh, I don't have okay. a wireless headset. Okay, um, actually I do, but uh, <laughs> I don't have a Bose one. Okay, yeah, but um, okay. So to be honest, I I have not read that yeah. uh, news. Uh, so if you if one of you have so my my I I just quickly glanced through it. Uh, I believe the the issue was the people were claiming that Bose was listening into their uh uh. The, their uh, users' conversations through their headset mm-hmm. uh, because they had yep. some uh, backlink stuff that was happening. Yep, I'm like reading off headlines: Bose wireless headphones spy on listeners, lawsuits <laughs> yeah. leak. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. like um, the, the, <laughs> another news where uh, WikiLeaks uh, leaked some information about TV listening to. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I mean, like, um, just I mean, okay. See, see, that's the uh, if you if you sometimes you know. In life, you don't have to be so overly conscious about all these things. Just yeah. leave. Uh, no, just don't say your password. <laughs> <laughs> oops, oops. No, just, uh, don't say out your password or don't share to you know private information. If you have to do it, you no, know, do it for, uh, with uh, encrypted channels, you no know, signal and all that. Uh, but just live your life normally. You know, if we, if you no, know, live your life as if that anything you say or do will be leaked anyway. Yeah. The walls are starting to have years. So the walls yeah. have always had years. <laughs> the years will always have years, right? And, you know, just make sure that you don't do silly things because people will know it anyway. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the next question is from Weyman and um, it's a long one. So he says, uh, I think the public tends to have a vague idea of computer sec- how computer security works and often puts themselves at risk through clicking on phishing links and such. What do you think are the most important things that public, like a lay person needs to know about computer security? This is actually very important. I believe this is something that IT departments also struggle with non-technical uh, employees. Yes. So, you know, um, three things, right? The stuff you receive from uh, by email, mm-hmm. the links that you visit, and the website that, that you visit. Right, um, user user awareness, user education is very important. Mm-hmm. You know, you can have the best security technology out there. You can buy, you can spend all your money. You know, making sure that you have the best technology in your company, but weak people are still the weakest link. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if they do not know that when they receive an email, you know, suppose, let's say you know your your best and uh, best security technology couldn't block the email, a block or block that attachment. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, people shouldn't click on the link if they are you know, if they find it suspicious. Let me give you a story. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was uh, some uh, there was uh, someone uh, um, who received an email. And she, she, you know, she received an email and, uh, there was, uh, an attach- attachment. And the, the attachment has a very interesting name. So nothing very suspicious. So she felt that, oh, maybe I could just, uh, double click on it and see what happened. And then, she, and, and then she shared the same email to her colleague. And what happened was that, uh, that attachment was, uh, a ransomware, mm-hmm. uh, an, a, a malicious program that tries to encrypt your files and ask mm. you for a ransom. Mm. Not very good, right? Mm. So she click on it, her colleague click on it, and their files are all encrypted. Uh, what made it worse was that, uh, you know, their laptops are connected to a shared yep. server. Yep. So oh. shared servers got, you know, the files are all mm. encrypted. Mm. But, you know, if they are aware that they shouldn't click on links that, yep. you know, that they are not, uh, they find it suspicious or find it funny or not interesting, they should report it to the, yeah. you know, the security team and get it. Best, I think one of the problems I find when I'm trying to explain this to people is, you know, you and I have a very tuned sense of what is suspicious. But a lot of people don't get it, right? They're like, Oh, somebody send me a free textbook. Okay, I want, I want, I want. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. They don't get it, right? They don't, yeah. It's so hard to train people about these things. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the other day, I got an email from my my parents saying that, oh, you know, I got an email from Apple saying that a uh, thousand uh, dollars have been charged on your Apple uh, uh, iTunes account, blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, and then like, check the email address is not from Apple.com. Of course, it's <laughs> fake. We have a written uh, agreement with our parents, like. Yeah. If anybody send you any WhatsApp, SMS, email, please forward it to us before clicking anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. So I, I guess a lot of uh, companies will try to simulate, you know, they pretend to be the bad guy, yeah. they send the yeah. bad stuff to them. Yeah. Or oh, nowadays, yeah. even better, they, they pretend to be the good guy, like, oh, we oh, found yeah. your computer was hacked by a bad guy. Let me fix it for you. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, thank okay. you, audience. Mm, thank thank you, you so yes. much. Thank you. So that, that's all the time we have for questions. There's a lot of chat in the chat room. Chat room. Don't yeah, worry but about uh, it. Eugene will be here. Yeah, I keep think chatting. Will, Eugene yeah. is already looking at the chat. And, uh, <laughs> so don't worry. We will get on with the show. Yeah, we'll get on with the show, and then we can answer questions as yes. we go along uh, afterwards as well. So the next segment is what we call the rapid fire round. In the rapid fire round, I get to ask a bunch of rapid questions to Eugene, and you have to answer equally rapidly. Uh, don't worry about being politically correct. It's all fine. <laughs> Short answers. Uh, so here we go. VI or Emacs? VI. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fans. What is your favorite website for getting uh, your news or, or fix? You know, like all this in, in this world of computer security, where do you get? Twitter. Wow, really? So you follow uh, some Twitter accounts. I yeah. follow yeah. a lot of Twitter accounts. Okay. So you know, if you want to know who to follow, you can follow, follow Eugene. Eugene. And then you can <laughs> see who he follows. What's your current favorite uh, video game or board game? Are you a video game? No, I don't play games. Okay, all right. Do you play real real life board games? Well, I mean, uh, my favorite one would be uh, Road Fighter Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, old school. Is there a new geek toy or gadget you're looking forward to buy? Um, I'm looking to buy... Uh, uh, the uh, USB, um, yeah. what do you call it? The um, my fair, my fair c- uh, card writer. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, that, that that stuff is quite fun. You know, getting into doors and accessing yeah, doors. including my cards. Uh, combine few cards into one. Right. <laughs> nice. Uh, is there a new uh, language tool or framework you want to pick up? Um, I, I just want to learn more R. R. Okay. For data science. Okay. Do you have a favorite sci-fi movie or a book? Uh, I don't really read much, but I hope to read more. Okay. Uh, what about what's your current favorite meetup group in Singapore? Uh, 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 Pi Data. <laughs> Pi Data. You 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 you're involved. You you're one of the organizers. Or? Uh, so I I started a group. Uh, I was involved until uh, late last year, mm-hmm. and I I took a break. Okay, good. Good to know. Uh, what's your favorite programming language? Uh oh. Oh 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 oh. oh. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Say it. Say it. Uh. R. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it used to be C, but uh, R is really fun. Okay. okay. Cool. And last one. This one is even more. Uh, 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 uh. What's your favorite distribution of Linux? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh this one. Uh, Say it. Oh, oh, oh. Debian. Debian. All right. Debian. Cool. Okay. cool. All right. Thank you very much for answering our rapid fire round. That's all we have. Uh, and let's move on to the next round, which is called picks. And the way we do picks is basically it's a uh, you know everybody gets to choose two or three interesting, fun things that you want our audience to try out. Uh, we'll go around the table. We'll let you give you some time to think about it, Eugene. Till then, we can start with Sani. Yeah, I wanted to share about online course. I think Eugene mentioned a lot about it. And this is specifically uh, udemy.com slash collection slash skills future. So if you go there, you have a ton of online courses. So if you are a Singaporean, you can use your Skills Future credit, uh, go and attend this course, and you can claim them under some uh, government scheme. And this, I think, I believe uh, what Eugene mentioned, like, you know, the government has to work with the public and uh, the people of the country together. And I think uh, there are some security, uh, uh, actually, there are some security related courses here. Let me just quickly Google and get them out for you. So go quickly to udemy.com slash courses slash skills future. So the complete cybersecurity course, hackers exposed. Complete cybersecurity course, endpoint protection. Well, wow, there's really a lot. Mm. Web hacking and security, Linux security and hardening. So uh, get started, people. If you're curious about security and you have access to computer and internet, to which I think yeah. as young Singaporeans. And if, uh, Singaporeans is free. It's free, exactly. Or at least they, they, they return all the money to you. Yes, so you can go to skillsfuture.sg slash credit or uh, one of the URLs. Yeah, we'll, we'll put, the, we'll we'll put, put all the links in the social notes. Yeah. So no, and you can it. claim it. So go and have some good online courses for Ooh. free. All right. Is that all? Yep. All right. That's all for me. I have two picks. Uh, the first is a podcast. As, as you know, I'm a podcast fanboy. So I listen to podcasts all the time. Uh, so I found a new podcast called the Linux Kernel Podcast. It's very interesting. Wow. Uh, all they do is every week, uh, the guy who runs it, I think he's a like old school uh, kernel de- uh, developer. Uh, he basically goes through all the new patches that uh, were sent out on the mailing list uh, and just goes through all of them and then talks about what all of them are. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's super fun. Oh, Joe Masters. Okay, I know yeah. him. You know him? Yeah. yeah, I know. I met him before. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. of course. <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, the way he talks about things, it sounds like he knows, he's been there, he's been doing stuff for a while. But, yeah, John Masters, correct. Uh, and it's super fun. Uh, but it's super 
duper like techy like he talks about you know oh so and so put a new patch for intel 5 level paging you know it's like so and so put a new patch for this and then it goes in deep into the patches and what they're doing and all the to and fro that goes in the mailing list it's almost like an audio way to follow the linux kernel mailing list <laughs> yeah, he's a very smart guy and yeah. uh he's a very productive guy as well yeah. and and uh, you know he 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 work on arm at red hat and uh, oh really he's a red hat okay. yeah so you know, if you're uh, doing embedded systems, yeah, uh, it has a lot of contribution that you thank him. For. Nice, yeah. nice, definitely. So that that's super fun. And the other uh, framework I want to pick today is something called uh, Port Audio, mm -hmm. which is a very nice uh, cross-platform uh, audio framework. So if you want to do anything with audio, as you know, I also like audio stuff. So uh, if you want to make anything that plays audio, records audio, whatever, uh, Port Audio is a great um, framework to, to use. It's very simple, very nice. Uh, I've used it before. I, I might have picked it before as well. Uh, but I'm using it again and it's uh, super cool, super useful, uh, very easy to use. All right. I have, um, I have one link to share. Yes. All right. Uh, let me paste the link. Uh, basically, you know, this page has all the different... Covert.io. Yes. Uh, you know, all the security papers that you want to read wow. about machine learning and security, deep wow. learning and all that stuff blogs and projects and even uh, data that you could use for your machine learning. And um, you know, I'll be going through many of these papers and if you're interested, you know, we could discuss and, you know. Speaking of papers, mm -hmm. yeah. uh -oh. we have a meetup called Papers We Love yes, in I Singapore pressed. and around the world where yes. engineers or rather the non-researchers uh, share such papers. So th thanks for the link. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll definitely mm -hmm. share it with the papers. With yeah, covert.io. So the subtitle of this website is Security, Big Data, and Machine Learning. And that's something Eugene has been talking about a lot, how security has to come in hand with big data and machine learning. Covert.io. Cool. Great. So let's go on to the very uh, couple few last segments, uh, starting with Event Loop. <laughs> some interesting uh, events uh, to attend near your place. So there is GopherConf Singapore that's going to happen in a month. And if you go to 2017.gophercon.sg, the conference is happening from 25th to 26th May. Eugene, are you, uh, have you tried Golang? Um, not yet. Not yet. He's busy with R. All right. So go and attend, uh, buy tickets for GopherCon. The next one is Maker Fair Singapore. Maker Fair Singapore is happening. Let me see. When is it happening? It's happening at, uh, July, actually, 20 to 21st July. Maker Fair is a great place to, um, to make find friends. IoT things to hack. <laughs> That's true. That <laughs> is true. The, oh, yeah. Yeah, that is actually true because um, these uh, maker projects are mostly hobbies mm -hmm. that people just like to try and play with. But it's also a great place to tell people about security. Yeah, and, definitely. You know, like Eugene said, from day one, you have to think about it. So day one is where makers get involved yeah. in building a project. So Maker, maker Fair and go for conf yeah is there is there a pi data conference or something that you guys are organizing or is there is do you know so how does the pi data meetup work is it a monthly thing now yeah it's a monthly thing um and uh we basically find speakers to present stuff mm -hmm. and so it's a very typical meetup yeah. but uh it's a very casual and mm -hmm. no sales pitch only technical stuff. Right? Awesome. That, that's how most developer meetups should be. Speaking of meetups, uh, are there security meetups in Singapore that uh, Singapore public can go and attend? Yeah. Uh, in fact, there is uh, one that is quite active. Mm -hmm. It's called Now Singapore. Oh, meetup. yes. E Emil, uh, one of our friend, uh, also is part of it. Yeah. 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 And uh, in fact, I was there like uh, yesterday or two days ago. Okay. They had a meetup, which is uh, pretty cool. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. Go and attend now Singapore meetups. And just oh, yeah, for the record... Also, Harish is saying in chat, uh, yeah. I remember seeing this in WeBuild.sg as well. There's DevSecOps meetup. Oh, yes. Ah, yes, DevSecOps. Also, uh, yeah. Yeah. So for any of these uh, meetups, by the way, in Singapore, you can go to webuild.sg, subscribe to the calendar, and you can attend... Plug. Plug, uh, yes. Plug. Which, uh, <laughs> yes, which brings us to the last segment, Electric Plug. All right. Plug, plug, plug. So this is a plugging time. So Eugene, you, you get to plug um, yourself and yeah. where people can find you. Yeah, and your I have projects. a Twitter account. Yes. Um, Twitter.com slash Eugene Tail. And I have a, a homepage which I need to update. But Tell us the website. Yeah, tamasek.org. Woo! <laughs> tamasek.org. <laughs> Tamasek has a very special meaning in I Singapore. I hope I don't get into trouble. 
<laughs> no, this has been running for ages. Anyways, Tamasek.net is also... Uh, Tamasek.net is owned by Harish. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have two friends owning Tamasek domain name. <laughs> yes, there you go. Harish yeah, in the chat is I saying... I need to drag Harish into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a fact. Harish owns it. He says it. So Tamasek.org... Uh, website, it has a secure HTTPS, so look at it. Whoa, yeah, yep, no, I'm going right. to push up my ranking, you know, Google. You know, <laughs> yeah, Google take, doesn't like uh, HTTP, yeah, non, non, non-HTTPS websites. Yeah, anymore. I think they ha- uh, have a signal to increase the rank, yeah. you know, if you have a right. HTTPS. Right, so for Google search, your yes. website will be higher, yeah. all right. Great, so website or Twitter, and uh, as uh, Eugene mentioned, go and follow his followings yes. on Twitter. So that you know who are the security people yeah, and leave, get uh, leave a comment on my blog so that I don't feel lonely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Great. So uh, thank you, Eugene. That's it for this week's episode. It was really, really good and uh, having you our uh, first guest live in person. Yeah, I'm surprised like the system held up. I was expecting like, you know, massive crashes and stuff like not working. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's been very smooth and uh, thank you for inviting me. And this is my first uh, podcast and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Cool, thanks. That's thanks. the whole point of doing it. Great, so thank you, Eugene. And that's it for this episode 45 of We Build Live. We will get together again online on another Saturday morning with another cool guest. Until then, return zero. Bye.